Yali Madak. I am Alvaiza Keronisa Gajiani, and the topic of my talk today is strengthening peace and harmony within relationships. There are around 7.7 .7 billion people in the world today. Can we imagine any country or state or city in this world that would have people who belong to the same ethnicity, follow the same religion, belong to the same class, have homogeneous values and who think alike? Probably not. They are more likely to be diverse. Diversity is the fabric of contemporary society and differences of opinions sometimes lead to disagreements and often conflict. Conflict has become part of the fabric of most societies and unfortunately sometimes conflict seeps within our relationships. Today let us as a Jamaat begin by reflecting on what is conflict and how we can resolve conflict in an amicable manner and thus aspire to live peaceful and happy lives. Conflict is a serious disagreement, an argument about something important. It is an active disagreement between people with opposing opinions or principles. If two people or groups are in conflict, they have had serious disagreements or arguments and cannot reach an agreement. Due to the COVID-19 situation, we spend more time in the confines of our home. More members of the family live in closer proximity for longer durations of time now or in some countries may happen in the near future. And this could lead to potentially conflicting situations. A study conducted in mid-2019 on the detrimental effects of crossover of parents' work-family conflict to family functioning and child mental health and printed in the Journal of Applied Developmental Psychology, Volume 62. The highlights of this research was that work-family conflict influences interparental conflict and parental irritability. Work-family conflict poses ongoing influences on child-adolescent mental health. And work-family conflict has issues of mental health over time. Why do conflicts occur? As humans, we all have our own objectives, goals, values, and priorities that we consider to be important. And they are different from the goals, the values, and priorities of people with whom we live and work. When we are only willing to see our perspective and not willing to understand, respect or incorporate the other's perspective of objectives, goals, values and priorities, it could potentially lead to conflict. Conflicts thus could occur when we start thinking that only our way of seeing things is right. Only our perspective is right. Only we are the best. Only our religion is the true one. Only our values are correct. Only our way of doing things is right. Let us imagine a beautiful garden of flowers. The garden consists of, amongst other, others, rows and rows of different types of flowers. There are lilies and there are orchids and there are roses and there are sunflowers and daffodils. Some are big and some are small. Some are white and some are colorful. Some have fragrance and some don't. Yes, we could have favorites, but in essence, could we say that one is better than the other? What if they were to have a conversation and each flower 
has a minute to boast on its essence. What would happen if each would show how different they are and how only they are the best? What if we asked ourselves, what makes the garden look beautiful? The answer would probably be all the different varieties of flowers with all their differences. Diversity is beautiful and unexpected, but it is not a burden to be endured, but it is an opportunity to be welcomed. It is a gift from God that is a blessing and a strength. Thus, although each one of us is different, our differences together beautifies us just like the garden that is so pleasing to the senses. Now let us reflect on the nature of conflicts. The nature of conflict could be matrimonial between couples, within family, between parents and children, between siblings, or between in-laws, or between friends, or commercial, between two business partners, or between employer and employee or a combination thereof. They could also be social or between neighbors, between members of one community or members of different communities. Can we turn conflict into blessings for ourselves? Let us reflect on how we can enhance peace and harmony within our families our workplaces and our jamaats by amicably resolving them. One of the things that we can do is prayer. A family that prays together stays together. The most important thing I believe is to pray together as a family. Allahumma ya Molana anta salam wa minka salam wa alaika yarjau salam. Haina Rabbana bi salam wa adakilna dar salam. O Allah, you are the peace, and from you is the peace, and to you returneth the peace. Tabarakta Rabbana wa ta'alaita ya dal jalali wali kram. O our Lord, grant us life of peace, and usher us into the abode of peace. O Lord of majesty and reverence, O Tu Shanu Shokatwaro Ane Buzargi Waro Dhani. In the second part of our dua, we pray for peace in our everyday lives. Surprisingly though, we are always telling one another, Muke to koi jaji shanti jnai. We need to pray effectively with our hearts, and our souls. Inshallah. Pachi paake shanti milni. Although we cannot meet in Jamaat Khanas for the present moment, we need, we need to adhere to our times of prayer. We need to give special time for our personal reflection in Ibadat and Bandagi. This will give us the wisdom and understanding the hakikati samaj to be kind and empathetic towards our relationships. The other thing we can do is look into our communication. We need to keep our communications intact. We need to reflect on who is doing most of the talk, talking in our communications within our family. Is it a monologue? We need to engage in a dialogue within family members. Use effective communication skills, speaking and listening. Listen intently. Sometimes in a conversation, in our minds, we are doing the rehearsal of what I'm going to say once the other one stops talking. We just wait for our turn to speak, to retort or to put the other's point down. Remember the three magic words we learned as children or that we teach our children? 
to say please, thank you and sorry. Request politely. Show appreciation for one another. Give and accept apologies. Sometimes we see an apology as a confirmation of guilt or that the other person would not realize his or her wrong behavior. But it opens lines of communication. It restores the dignity of the hurt person and makes them feel better. The other person too feels empathy towards the offender. The most important reflection we could ask ourselves is, what does this family member mean to me? Or inversely, what do I do if I did not have this person in my life? Family members need to trust one another and to give each other their space. The young can learn from the senior's experience and the elderly need to give advice, but to understand that the young will learn from their mistakes. Advice and then give them their freedom to learn. We know that all of us as humans have levels of creativity, of wisdom, of knowledge. If we can tap into the creativity, the wisdom, the knowledge of our immediate family members and those around whom we live and work, then, we be, then I believe that we will be able to resolve conflict. Thus being non-judgmental, being humble and kind and respectful, empathetic and loving towards one another are some ways our relationships, be they be family or business, or within the wider, wider community will be free of conflict and live peaceful and happy lives. This would also help us succeed as a family, a community, a nation and as humanity. How can we resolve conflict within the Jamaat? We need to remember that our overall objective is the same to serve the Imam of the time through his Jamaat, to serve as effectively as we can, and to remember everyone is trying to do his or her best. As Saadi of Shiraz in his poetry says, the progeny of Adam are limbs of each other, having been created of one essence, when the calamity of time affects one limb, the other limb cannot remain at rest. If you have no sympathy for the troubles of others, you are unworthy to be called by the name of a human. We as humans have a responsibility to our families and our societies. For this generation, and for generations to come. Why do conflicts develop in organizations? Amongst other reasons, workplace conflict is rooted in poor communication, weak leadership, change in leadership, dissatisfaction with management style, and power seeking. For example, when an employee demands for working recognition, such as an increase in compensation or promotion, this scenario may cause conflict. What can we do to have peace and harmony between business associates? We need to have written contracts, have exit policies in place. We need to have clarity in all aspects of the business. Families should have wills written down, which should be legally notarized and wills need to be stored safely. We are all extremely lucky that our institutions are working tirelessly to bring to us various and the most accurate and updated news in these difficult times. And they are organizing quality programs for us. Thus, although we hope to resolve our dis differences in an amicable manner, we may need to contact the services of the NCAP. Imam Jafar Sadiq has said, 
The charity which Allah loves the most is the peace re-established between quarreling parties. In 1986, Maulana Hazrat Imam Salwatu Alahi established the Global Institutional Framework for the Conciliation and Arbitration Boards to provide dispute resolution services to Ismailis at the regional, national, and global level. At CAP, we provide mediation services at family, matrimonial, and commercial disputes. We are aware that members of INCAP are professionally trained and work with confidentiality. They aim for speedy resolutions of conflict. Going to courts could be costly. They offer their voluntary services. It is less formal and parties are in control of the outcome. Alternate dispute resolution is re rooted in the injunction of the Quran. Surah 4, Ayat 35 of the Holy Quran says, If ye fear a breach between them twain, appoint two arbiters, one from his family and the other from hers. If they wish for peace, Allah will cause their reconciliation, for Allah hath full knowledge and is acquainted with all things. Our sister institutions like the Community Counseling Services, the Health Committee, the Education Committee, Safety and Security Committee, the EPB, the SWB, the Women's Activity Portfolio, the Committee for the Elderly, under the aegis of the National Council for Tanzania, are also on standby to assist us. Thus, in conclusion, we have tried to reflect on conflict as a concept, why they occur, and how we can help reduce conflicts within families and business, within the Jamaat, its importance and its importance. Thus, for bringing about peace and harmony in our lives, and the role of NCAP and the other institutions in assisting us in conflict resolution during the COVID-19 situation. I ask you today, what will be the new normal after COVID-19? And the answer is, it's up to each one of us. Thank you and Yali Madad.